Hi, I'm Milesy, and this is a California condor. The image was taken from a photograph that I took at the zoo a few weeks ago when I went on that trip. And I really liked the overall look and just kind of the composition of this one, and I thought that it would look really cool as a silhouette piece with the condor hunched over and looking all menacing up against the cloudy sky, so that's exactly what I did with this. And I put it in grayscale just because I thought that it would look really cool that way because there wasn't that much color anyway just from the way that it was shot. So I put the image into grayscale and created a pattern and right away you can tell that it's not actually grayscale anymore. There's a lot of green and pink and blue and purple and a little bit of everything else in there. Which when it's done it does look grayscale but right now it just looks kind of funky but that's more just because DMC doesn't have a whole lot of gray so what happens is that the software just takes some of the mid-tones with the greens and the pinks and the blues and makes it look grayscale later on and that's always one of the things about grayscale pieces that kind of fascinate me just how the color up against one another how that makes it look like something completely different so that was a kind of cool one and I do really like how this one turned out and it's currently drying on my table right now so that later on I can film the other video for you guys. But this is one of the smaller ones I've done as far as the full coverage pieces go. It only had 31 colors in it and I got this mostly done over the course of one day in probably about eight hours. I haven't added up the timestamps yet but it took about eight sessions, so that's probably about eight hours, roundabout. The only part that wasn't done yesterday was a little bit on a live stream I did today, and you might be able to see a very slight quality jump at the end when I went on to the live stream, but for the most part, I don't think you can really tell that anything's super funky or weird with the pattern or the video, I don't think, I don't hope. Uh, the only thing that I think I would change is I would probably add some more dither to it just because you can really see a lot of the color banding there where it goes from gray to pink to purple to green and blue again up here in the corner but it kind of reaches a point where if you add too much dither it just becomes unbearable so it's always a really hard balance to hit with this one and I think I went a little bit too close to the side of not enough dither but Again, once it's done, I don't think you can really tell as much, but that's kind of one of the funny things about doing these pieces is that when you're starting them, they look completely different to when you finally finished them, and that's always one of the things that I find really cool about these. But part of the banding here actually let me do something I don't normally get to do with a lot of these pieces, because ordinarily when I stitch, I will go find the colors block by block. So I start up in the upper right corner and I find all of the colors that are in that block and then I go to the block below and I find all of those colors, which is pretty much how I always stitch. Almost always, but this was one where I made an exception because I knew that there would be two big chunks of very solid color. There was the black of the silhouette, and then there's the white in the sky. So what I did was, when I got to the sky, I started just stitching around that and not actually going block by block anymore. That way I could do the last two colors without ever counting at all. I just had to fill in the section of white for the sky, and then I'd fill in the section of black. And I find that doing that makes it go a lot faster because you're not having to worry about counting stitches and is this in the right place. You're just filling it in. and the pattern is done at that point and right around here was pretty much I was just doing the last little bits in before I had to or I got to start doing the fill and that's what this is right now where I no longer had to count and it went so much faster than it would have done if I had counted out all of the white first and then did the small amount of confetti around it and then counted out all of the black and did everything around that as well so that's a little trick if you have a piece that has a big fill area, use or leave the big fill area until last. But this was just a little small one, not really a whole lot to it, but I'm still pretty pleased with it. Uh, tune in next week. I'll be doing the video where I show you how to frame something like this in a hoop. 
because that's pretty much the only reason I did this. I don't have anything else too much to say about it because it's a really simple little project, so I'll leave you with the rest of it. And there we go! I'm pretty pleased with him overall. He's a little less detailed than I would have liked, I think, but especially in the hoop now, he really looks grayscale like he's supposed to. So there we go. I'm calling this a success. I like it. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments, please put them down in the box below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. But for now, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!